Odin once again, and wicked regards to all who care and dare to listen. I'm here today on August 27th, 2022, with a special message and a request, if you don't mind. So, have I got news for you? Well, that's, of course, a multilingual pun. So news in English, puns with news in Greek. And as some of you well know by now, and I'm sure you have taken this instruction to heart, that news, intelligence, is the core concept of Gnostic teaching, both in the past and today. So Gnostics know what noose is. They know that everything is material and that noose is nucleic acid. And at the same time, it is the calibrated dose of nucleic acid at the base of the human genome. Got that? So, the word noose is the root of such words as noetic, noesis, and noema, which are actually Greek terms that are found in the philosophy of Franz Brentano, who was a forerunner of phenomenology and an important figure in Nous today, in Gnosis today. And of course, you know that I call Gnosis applied noetics. So it's all about Nous, and I'm here with some breaking Nous for you. I want to formally announce something I've never said it in quite this way before, so bear with me. I know there are some cads out there who find that novelty and originality are not to be accepted. But here goes, here comes the announcement. I am not actually a revivalist of Gnosticism. In fact, although I pass in some circles for a Gnostic scholar, I don't care at all about the ism, you see? So Gnosticism is a term for a dead and gone religious, mystical movement that existed in the Near East, in the Levant, principally, for many, many centuries. So there are many books about Gnosticism. There are many people on the internet, both scholars and pop gurus, chattering on about Gnosticism. But That ain't me. You see, I'm not here to revive anything that can be found in the ancient surviving textual sources, which are meager and shambolic. I like that word, shambolic. They're in shambles, okay? No, I am here to tell you that they are here, they're back. So I am not merely a representative of ancient Gnosticism. I am one of those ancient Gnostics living today. We're back and I'm not the only one, though arguably I am the alpha wolf in the pack. And it must be true because it fucking rhymes. 
So again, now indulge me for a moment while I repeat myself. I am not here to revive Gnosticism. I do not represent the ancient movement. I don't have to revive anything because the gnosis that I bring to the world and teach is alive now. And it never really died in the first place, you see. It was repressed, the teachers were persecuted, schools and universities were burned, mystery centers were polluted and destroyed. Yeah, all of that. Same old, same old story of history. But through all of that, the living imperative and supreme power of Gnosis never died. It doesn't have to be revived. I don't have to represent something that was lost. Rather, I embody something to be found. Get the difference? And so, of course, as usual, here is JLL on the internet making outrageous claims and demonstrating the boundless scope of his self-importance, right? Certainly that's true and I would never deny it, but at the same time, do not overlook what I've said before. I like to keep my pretenses right out in the open. What you hear is what you get with me. You know my agenda, you know my mythogen, you know something about my ethics, and there's more coming. I love to be totally transparent, you know? Transparency is sort of like the cloak of, what was it, Hades? Perseus was the Greek hero who slayed the Medusa and then took her head and used it to paralyze the monster Cetus. And therein he was able to rescue the chained woman named Andromeda. And there is a remarkable mirroring or parallel between that myth and the myth of the fallen goddess scenario, the chained woman, Andromeda, and the fallen goddess, Sophia. And in order to achieve this feat of heroic daring, Perseus, whose name means the destroyer, uh, was aided by the gods. So I believe he received a pair of winged sandals from Hermes. That represents telepathy and the ability to move the mind through time and space as a shaman can do. But he also received a cloak of invisibility. Do you remember that aspect of the myths, that detail? I think I have it right. Too lazy to go back and check it. Yeah, I think it was Hades, the god of the underworld, who gave Perseus a cloak of invisibility. Well, transparency is my cloak of invisibility because transparency is something that you see through, but you cannot actually see transparency itself. Can you? So yeah, I'm a self-indulgent, arrogant prick. And I make these outrageous claims, but I'm nothing compared to others in the world today, in well-known names, in all fields of life, in all callings, who make far worse claims, but they don't have the honesty to be transparent about it. You see, for instance, 
I'll take you to the top. You like it when I do that, right? Who on this planet makes the most outrageous claim about themselves? The ultimate claim of self-importance. Well, the name for those creatures, proper name in German, is the Überwoch. Not the Übermensch, the Überwoch. Now, I talked about the Überwoch. This might get this upload taken down, by the way. I talked about the Überwoch specifically with or in relation to certain historical events that I considered in the process of decoding the Mandela effect. That's background, that's homework. You don't need to know that. All you need to understand is that the Übervolk hold themselves to be a higher species on this planet who operate from the mandate of an off-planet Father God, whom the Gnostics identified as a demented alien pretender, by the way. And they claim on the one hand to be engaged in the correction of the world and to be the benevolent handers of all handlers of all the human races, the benevolent handlers. Oh, how wonderful is that? And that claim which is not transparent, is merely a ploy and a disguise for their true intentions, which is to decimate the human race like a swarm of archontic locusts. So are you with me? You feel me? I'm making this announcement, <clears throat> and I intend to continue making this announcement over the next weeks and in the immediate future. But for now, I want to leave you with that decisive distinction. The living gnosis today is what I teach. So I am a living Gnostic and so being alive, I don't need to revive anything. Now, about my request, I have to tell you that something has happened recently that really baffles me, and I want to ask you to consider it, and perhaps in the comments, lend me or benefit me with your insight. You see, there is a kind of discussion going on on the planet. It's not really a debate, as I pointed out in my article and talk on the missing debate over Gnosticism, that a debate requires two opposing parties on the same platform. You don't see this today. What you see is one platform, which is the mainstream propaganda vehicle, which is a weapon of mind control and a platform for various types of psyops. And then you see another platform of those who are honestly and accurately in many cases exposing and opposing this agenda, the Marxist communist, transhumanist agenda, okay? But they're not on the same platform, so it's not really a debate. But if you go to certain mainstream channels, and even certain, as well as certain alternative channels, you find that there are various voices, well-informed, well-intentioned, who are pushing back against that agenda, which I call the program of the Kovyet regime and the Kovyet commissars, okay? And 
There it is. You can go and listen to hours and hours of people talking, interviews, discussions. And that in total is what I would call the chorus of the anti-Koviet opposition. And it includes some people who are designated by the Koviet regime as being pro-white, right-wing, white advocates, okay? And they're described as such by uh, those voices of the Marxist ideologues, and they are condemned for being so. So there's a battle going on. There's a discussion, but not a debate, because the Koviet commissars do not allow their viewpoints to be debated. James Lindsay recently pointed this out in a short talk he did titled, What is a Woman? So James Lindsay is one of these voices in opposition to the Koviet program. Another one, strangely named, is the Jolly Heretic, who has a YouTube channel. And what has happened recently that really baffles me is this. In their ongoing effort to oppose, to expose and oppose the Koviet agenda of transhumanism, they invoke the term Gnostic and Gnosticism. They also invoke the terms Hermetics or Hermeticism and even, get this, even mystery religions. Now hold on there just a moment. Cut action, stop the camera, Hold on there, Captain Kangaroo. By the way, I am currently writing, directing, and acting in a film that is being shot and projected at the same time. That's premium Gnostic Intel, by the way. And my cameraman, is Captain Kangaroo. That is a fact. And you can quote me on that, and I'm sure it will support my credibility as a Gnostic teacher. Parentheses. Captain Kangaroo was the host of one of the earliest children shows on American television. But it doesn't end there. <laughs> oh, no. No, it doesn't. I invite you to go and look at the birth of a kangaroo, whatever it is, a baby kangaroo. There's probably a name for it, like a lion cub, a wolf cub. Go and look at what happens at the birth of a baby kangaroo. Do you know what happens? Well, it pops out of the womb, and then it crawls into a sack, an actual cradle that's part of the external abdomen of the mother kangaroo. Now, just imagine how that would be to do that. Would you enjoy that? Imagine if you were a human animal that not merely popped out into the world between the legs of an adult female human, which is the correct definition of woman. And then you have the option to go shelter yourself in this wonderful postnatal cradle in your mother's own body. Well, you do. You actually do. If you are the twice-born anthropos, 
but that's another subject. Close parentheses. Now back to this baffling development. It appears that, I don't know, over the last couple of months, James Lindsay, who is a prominent voice, and other less prominent so-called alternative voices on the internet are invoking the term Gnostic as a way to condemn the Marxist left. You get that? <clears throat> they are referring to Gnosticism and even to mystery religions in order to slander the Marxist ideologues. They compare the Marxist ideologues to Gnostics. Have you picked up on this? Now, this may be nothing. It may fizzle out. It may be a quirk that appeared in a couple of talks here and there. But even so, I find it weird. Why would they do this? After all, in the first place, to know anything about who the Gnostics were, what they believed, what they talked about and taught, how they behaved, what their ethics were, to know anything about that, to have any legitimate ground for even saying their name, requires a tremendous commitment of study in ancient texts and in the history of religions. And yet certain voices on the right, put that in quotes, appear to be invoking this term Gnostic as a way to condemn the Marxist ideologues, but at the same time, of course, doing so, aren't they condemning the Gnostics? Because they claim that Gnostics and Marxists hold the same position, they act in the same way, they behave in the same way, and they may even hold the same ideology somewhere along the line. This is extremely perverse and strange, and I really don't understand how this is happening. Now, I'm not saying that this is a widespread phenomenon. I've only picked it up here and there, and it would be an omission on my part if I did not mention a special case that appears in this dialogue, this discourse, and that would be Keith Woods. Now, Keith Woods did a talk called Is the Left a Gnostic Death Cult? And what he was doing in that talk was addressing this allegation. And in fact, he stood against this allegation and he came to the conclusion that it was not either fair or accurate to use the term Gnostic in reference to the left, to the Marxist transhumanist ideologues. So I would say to Keith Woods, and I guess this is what you call a shout out. Your kind of prodigy, definitely. And some would say that I'm a prodigy as well in my own right. And I find it remarkable that you would apply your intelligence to a critique of the use of the word Gnostic even though, as far as I know, you may as well know nothing about the true message of the ancient Gnostics. Nevertheless, it's remarkable, and in a way, I venture to say, admirable, that you found it worthy to 
come out and say, no, that doesn't play. You can't use that term, even though you, Keith Woods, did so basing your argument on the erroneous profile of the Gnostics and not the profile that I present in not in his image. All right, then. That's enough of the gruesome details. What I am requesting of you is to consider this bizarre development. I really don't see what could possibly be behind this. I have some suspicions, but I really would like to know your opinion, if you have one. Why on this sacred earth would any of those voices who are standing against the Koviet agenda invoke the word Gnostic? Where are they coming from? What possible background do they have for using that name, that label, as a term of condemnation. You see what I'm getting at? So this has been happening. As I say, it might be just a, a fluke. It may not continue. But as a living Gnostic today, I can say that my curiosity has been aroused to say the very least. And so there you have it. Whether or not you've been aware of this bizarre development, you are now informed. And I would be happy if you could say something about it. Because I, at this point, am quite puzzled. I have some suspicions, but I don't have any grounds or evidence for proceeding on those suspicions. But I'll just tell you in closing with what one of my suspicions is. I suspect that the comparison between Gnostics and Marxist ideologues might have been implanted, you see, in some way. For instance, in the case of James Lindsay, who could have suggested to him that he used the word Gnostic in this way? Did it come from himself? From his own education? Or did it come from some advice on the side. I really don't know. And so anything that you might be able to say to enlighten me on this matter will be appreciated and enough said. <laughs>